My name is Bethany Thiel. I work as the Senior Threat Intelligence Consultant for Verisprite Cybersecurity. So I started out um, with network administration. That was my original associate's degree was I was going to be a network administrator, just like my dad. And I hated it. <laughs> so I applied for an internship to a nuclear lab and I mean, somehow they accepted me. And I was really excited because it was an international position. Anyone could apply and just, I got it. And it was for a security analyst position internship. And that's how I got my start in cybersecurity was just because I got really lucky, I guess. So threat intelligence is a lot different than any other security role that I've previously done. I've done security engineering, I've done compliance work, and I've done uh, SOC operations work. And it's just completely different from any of those roles just because it's purely research-based. And it's you're constantly looking for threats that no one knows are out there yet. So for example, when a client comes to us, we go, okay, we see you and if we were an attacker, here's how we would attack you. And then we would go into researching these different companies and then the different threats that exist for that landscape. So threat intelligence is basically people coming to us asking, how are they going to attack us? And us going, well, here's how I would do it. Um, always keep looking. <laughs> so I think cybersecurity threats are just going to keep growing. I mean, if you look at cybersecurity in general, it's a pretty new position when you compare the timeline of when it started and how it's grown so far. So it's pretty much in its little infancy step. So I think from here, it's just going to grow and continue becoming this huge catalyst. So as for how threat intelligence will change, I mean, there's just going to be a growing demand for threat intelligence just because Attackers are really sneaky sometimes about where they hide their goods. And so threat intelligence is about finding those goods. Oh, they need to have an open mind. I mean, there's no two ways about it. For threat intelligence, you really need to have an open mind. You can't be biased by your own opinions um, because you're just gonna miss things. And in fact, when it comes to threat intelligence, because there is an implicit bias in certain things, it's best to have your work checked by another person with a separate set of opinions. So if I'm more left-leaning, then I'm also gonna to go to one of my coworkers who's more right-leaning and check my work with them and make sure I'm not missing anything from their perspective. Because if I am missing something, that's a huge blind spot. Yeah, so GitHub's a really good place to start. It has so many tools uh, just for you to look into. The one skill set that I highly recommend for anyone looking into threat intelligence is OSINT open source intelligence, I mean, that skill set, I mean, when I was doing SOC analyst work, I was like, yeah, I mean, I got this creepy set of skills, I can look into anybody and dig up information on them. But now that I'm in threat intelligence, that skill set is huge. I mean, there's never a day that I'm not applying it. So if someone's looking to get into threat intelligence, I highly recommend that they also start looking into OSINT. And some good tools for OSINT is, there's a tool set out there called OSINT Framework, and um, it's just laid out in a really cool way. You have the section of information you want to find information on. So like the categories, like usernames, you click username, and it opens up a bunch of tools that you can use to find that information. I'm a huge OSINT nerd. I love OSINT, and I love the skill set that you obtain from learning OSINT. And there's this demand in threat intelligence just because of the way threat actors work is to find information out on the dark web using those OSINT skills. So the blurb that I did for Crest is really about how you can apply your OSINT skills into just a basic way of finding information on the dark web. It doesn't go too deep into it so that beginners can take a look at it and they'll be able to track to what is going on. But it also might help someone who has experience in the field, but not necessarily with finding information on the dark web using OSINT. 